Hi everybody. Welcome back to nythespirit.com video channel. Look what I've got. Have you got one too? I hope so. If you don't, you better get one because this is Kane and Potvin. Do you know who they are? Hang on, I'm going to introduce you to them. Hi guys. Hey. Hi. So, Kevin. Yep, Kevin. Brian. Hi, David. With a Y, by the way. Yeah, we don't want to mess around with that. How you doing? Well, well, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy to be talking with you. Likewise. Nice to, do, nice to have you together. Yeah. You used to be competitors. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's it. Um, no, I, 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 I would say we were, were uh, compatriots, <laughs> even though we hadn't met, met one another you know, back in the day. I, I know Grapes certainly felt this kind of affinity for the Pikes because it was like, yeah, we're both from kind of secondary, third dairy, western towns and whatever. So, you know, we, I, I felt like we kind of were cut from the same cloth, pop rock bands, you know, just trying to write that better melody. Kevin is with Grapes, or was with Grapes, or Verath? No, we're still playing. Well, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> but I wanted to introduce Brian. Of course, Brian is Northern Pikes. Uh, well, well, well one-fourth of it. What is a Northern Pike? <sighs> it's a long journey. Um, no. It's not a fish? What? Yes, it is, yeah. Well, you know, you can go down to the States, and sometimes they think it's a road. I see. Uh, in Alaska, it might be a road. Yes. Yeah. But um, but in Canada, it's very fishy, yes. <laughs> very fishy? Oh, God, that was bad. And uh, Grapes of Wrath, I'm assuming you got permission from Steinbeck. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, right? So, <laughs> and nobody's come after us. Is there any reason you could call yourself Grapes of Wrath? Um, we had a show. It was going to be our first show. We didn't have a name, so we went through a, a book of Leonard Maltin's movie reviews of 1981 or whatever the hell it was yes. and we wrote down a bunch of movie titles and that was the least stupid um, African Queen was in the running so was the Bermuda Triangle that would be a drag act actually yeah. so <laughs> so I, th I think we went with the right name and also our girlfriends all hated it so we kind of thought I think we're on to something, we're on to something. <laughs> <laughs> and how about Northern Pikes I'm always interested to know what causes someone to come up with a name such as that we had a local agent at the time, who actually had some shows booked for us that we had we'd never played a gig yet, and we hadn't even selected a name. So uh, I remember hanging around Jay's uh, folks' basement and 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 probably had a few drinks and, and started writing out silly names, any name, and um, and that yeah, it just it wasn't it wasn't like oh that's the one. It was the next morning going. Okay, what? Uh, eh, you know, yeah. put that on the poster, and that was it. But it wasn't. Um, we'll wasn't, change it later. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, yes, and it, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. it didn't feel permanent at all when we decided to call ourselves that. Neither did grapes. But I it rarely, just, I rarely ask that question. But with the two of you, it's interesting, mm -hmm. only because you're now Kane and Pot fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't get very clever with that name. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys come up with that name? <laughs> so tell me about Orangeville, Ontario. Well, Orangeville is a town in Ontario, duh, about an hour from um, about an hour from Toronto, and it's kind of figured for us fairly prominently. Uh, it's where uh, we record our album near Orangeville. We played our first show near Orangeville. Uh, my wife's from Orangeville, um, you know, so there's several songs on the record that have reference to Orangeville. So the vinyl version of the album it will be coming out in orange vinyl. That's right. <laughs> Orangeville vinyl. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, because I see all this orange here. Yes. We like orange. It's turned into the, sort of the theme theme of, of uh, this this particular album and project so far. Yeah. Now, this album was recorded in Orangeville? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because well, it's orange. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> uh, a friend of mine who I grew up with, Daryl Newdorf, um, this back in Kelowna, he went on to become a record producer, and, he, and he's done uh, like Nico Case's albums, and he did a Blue Rodeo album. He's done a number of albums, and uh, Grapes of Wrath worked with him in 2013, I think it was, mm -hmm. and uh, or 2012. And I, I've worked with Daryl a lot over the years, and he's just a really good guy to work with. So when we decided to go in the studio, um, Brian asked, you know, what do you want to try working with him? Sure. So that's how we did it. When you guys were opposite ends. One, you you were grapes, and, and you and you were pikes. Mm -hmm. What was it 
that the two of you looked at each other and said, we can make our kind of music. Well, I think for me it was, it was the roles that we played in, in each band and the similarities between the bands because the bands are, uh, have a collaborative nature. They have multiple songwriters and singers in them, both of them. So that made it easy or, yeah. or we found a, a rapport that I think was uh, workable instantaneously versus maybe somebody who had come from a band where there's a guitar player and that's all he does and, this, and everyone's got these sort yeah, of seg no more segre segregated yeah. roles yeah. where it was I think both the Grapes and the Pikes were bo both more communal type of bands musically or something yeah. and uh, so it made the, the collaborative effort easier. It does see uh, it, it, both of you, both of you, both of you, plus both of the the groups, Pikes and and, and Grapes, I do have an identity of being from the West Coast. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though, well, you're Kelowna, right? Well, we were from Kelowna, and then we moved to Vancouver when our first album, our first EP, came out. So yeah, we were definitely identified with Vancouver. And you're Saskatoon. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. was that like? <laughs> <laughs> he said knowingly. <laughs> well, it was an adjustment, you know. It was it was interesting because I did I kind of grew up in Victoria. Oh, did you? From about the age of seven, well, yeah, seven to fourteen or fifteen, I can't remember. Um, but um, you know, it was that was a it was a jarring move at that age. How old were you when you did that? Fourteen. Wow. You know, and uh, there was a few weeks before Christmas. You know, from Victoria to Saskatoon in December. And I'll say that again, from Victoria to Saskatoon. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, I, I, I have been to, I drove through past Saskatoon once. But a lot of great things happened in Saskatoon. And I have a, you know, you know, obviously I've got some sentimentality about the place now because the band came from there. We were all ambitious to get out of there and get going and go see other places. And, and it worked. It, you know. it also, it's a university town, so is it not? Yeah, yeah. So it probably has a bit of a youth edge to it, more fun. Well, like the Saskatoon, I remember this from back in the day, there were, you know, was it Records on Wheels had imports sure. and sold punk rock records and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so we spent all my chance yeah, exactly. working at the Army and Navy Department store. <laughs> just send them straight to Records on exactly. Wheels. Exactly. You can just send the check over there. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, Pikes and Grapes are playing some shows together in January in Saskatchewan. As a matter of fact, I posted that information because I found it on the net. I posted it on MarsdenGlobal.com for those who wish to know about that. Uh, and I know that you're doing a little, a few gigs between now and January. Yeah. Across the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've got some stuff in the Maritimes in January, and then we'll be out west again in March and April. Yeah. We'll probably be through here in late uh, February as yeah. well, too, I think, through Ontario again. So are you guys still playing with grapes and pikes as well as being yeah yeah we're pikes, still doing pikes played 14 shows this year i think how many did we do we did probably at least 30 or 40 right yeah um, grapes probably did three shows or we, we don't yeah. play a lot <laughs> but yeah we, we did a few shows this year she ain't pretty <laughs> who did that song that was us yeah tell me the story behind it ah the story okay well um I don't have. Don't use names. No, no, no. <laughs> certainly not. Well, I might use one name, but it's famous. Um, Valerie Harper. Valerie Harper. Yeah. Uh, so I was. Uh, um, the Pikes were getting getting their wheels rolling, and I met a woman in 1987 from Toronto. And when the guys were heading off home, in between tours, I was going there to visit with her. She lived at home with her folks, and they were great, and invited me in to stay at their place. And in the guest room one night, I was watching television, and Rhoda came on. Yes. And I'm watching Rhoda, and there's a scene between Rhoda's sister, played by Julie Kavner, I believe. I think the character's name was Brenda, speaking to a typical good-looking woman, like just general magazine cover lady. Yes. And she said, the Brenda character says to her, what, what could possibly be wrong with your life? Look at you, you're beautiful. And and she said, I'm not really beautiful. I just look that way, and I thought that was funny. Jotted that down for, because I don't trust my memory. I haven't <laughs> ever in my life. <laughs> and if I want to remember something, I'd better write it down. So that was it, and you know, sat down, 
a, maybe a couple, probably a couple months later. I remember writing that at home in Saskatoon, but yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, I, I don't watch much sitcoms, otherwise I probably could have written two or three songs by now. <laughs> That's right. There's loads of songs waiting in Seinfeld if you just want to dig into that. Yeah. Uh. I've never seen a Seinfeld. You know, I always did radio, uh, nighttime radio, so the other day I turned it on television, I thought The Golden Girls was a new series. <laughs> but truly, you don't, you, when you do nighttime work, you guys are musicians, you don't see television. Not really, no. I haven't owned a TV in ages. Yeah. Tell me where this wonderful, I know that this is the album that's orange. This is the album that you made in Orangeville. Uh, and I think you said there's a song on here about being orange. <laughs> yes, <laughs> about eating oranges. Yeah, uh, you had when you did this album. It's the two of you. Yeah. But you've supplemented it with a lot of other musicians. No other instruments, but uh, we play. We performed. We played all the instruments. Yeah, I think Daryl played some percussion. Some percussion, yeah. Oh, yeah. But wow, everything else is us. Yeah. I thought you were better supplementing with, you know. Other other musicians. We're really impossible to work with. Our so egos it's, it's better, allow anybody it's, else. It's better that yeah. we just That's do what it ourselves. Leading up to, actually, <laughs> yeah. I, I know exactly. I'd get there. I thought I'd have to bring it out, but you brought it out, so it's <laughs> oh, no. okay. No, we're quick oh, no. on the button. Oh yeah. <laughs> so tell me what this is all about, and where do you go from this point? What it's all about? Well, we we started off uh, just going in the studio to see what would happen because we'd been playing shows together for almost a year and. Uh, uh, well, we'll see if something happens. And at the end of five and a half days, we had five songs finished. And we thought, well, we could do an EP, but uh, we're not really EP fans. You know, we, we like albums. Mm -hmm. So we did a pledge music campaign to get the money to do side two. So everybody who pledged got side one immediately, and then they had to wait a long time for side two. Well, no, what was it? When did they get oh, side two? Like six months know. later? <laughs> something like that. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, it even though, even though it took another, yeah. another five and a half days for us to record. Side yeah, two. but it took six months to finish and get it out. And that's taken some time to figure out, you know, how it was going to get released. But we've got it all in motion now. How do you feel about the? I mean, you were in the record business before you, as a, more than a musician, mm -hmm. and you've been involved since like you were fourteen. Yeah. How do you feel about how all of the 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 process of getting an album out, not making it, because that really hasn't changed that much. It's, it's changed huge. Well, it's, you can make a record in your house that oh sounds yes, fantastic. You can make a, a great sounding record on $2,000 worth of gear. But, but the, the process has changed. A lot. Of getting it into people's ears. Oh, God, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, Does it excite you? Yeah, I think so. It's mostly. It, it, it just, there's, I don't know if we'd be doing this in the old architecture of, of 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 the record biz. Like we just, you know, no one would sign us. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, 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 so there's the magical part. So and 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 then and beyond that, there's just so much opportunity for 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 the you know industrious, independent-minded musician. Yeah. I totally um, agree. The, the resources are all there. The opportunities are there. The the maps are kind of laid out now. It's just it's just doing the work, and so that's what we did. And yeah. I, we have no one to look to when things get done or don't get done than than each other. And I, I, I like it. It's great, you know. And we don't have to ask permission from anybody. You know, we don't have like a label overseeing it or whatever. No, and there isn't this sort of big piles of money being leveraged around all over the place to to, to have things done. So. Um, no, it's been pretty good. It's, uh, I, we're, I'm, we're enjoying it. I mean, the earth is shifting beneath our feet as we speak. Yeah. It constantly seems to be, you know, moving. Every three yeah. months there's another, like, oh, no, now it's done this way, you know. And, um, but, but I, I, I think, think it's it, better, more good than bad, for sure. I, I actually, I love the new technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the new processes. Uh, for example, nythespirit.com, uh, the studio is in my home. And all the DJs are free form. They do whatever they want. There's no formula. There's no commercials. And so you couldn't do that anywhere else today. You know, if I, when I find a, a, an album such as this that I love, I don't have to ask anybody else. I don't have to go look at a chart. I don't have to call a consultant in Texas. I just say, I love it. I'm going to play it. 
And that's what's which, exciting. Which what? feels sort of very, like an old idea, in a way, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it feels like the 60s or something like that. where you Like what FN average. was in the beginning, you know, deep yeah. cuts and just like, yeah. Yeah. some guy, just, you know, just sitting in a booth, a quite quiet, dark booth by himself, just playing records that he likes. and Some guy with good taste. Yeah, that's exactly. You know, to, it's, you know. Well, we, we, I, I think that's true. However... Well, music, any kind of uh, entertainment, is very subjective. Mm -hmm. So you may not like the guy over here in his bedroom, but this guy over here in his bedroom is is your is what you like, yeah. and meanwhile your best friend is liking the other guy. And isn't that the same as putting out an album? Yep, I think so. Largely. Absolutely, it's not for everybody. No, 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 yeah. absolutely. It's special, and you as the creators, the musicians. You don't have to do, you don't have to make sure there's a hook in the song so that some A&R guy is happy with you. That's where we're, you're not creating with this imagined whatever entity or whatever, I hope we please this entity. It's yes. first and foremost, we please ourselves with what we've done. And, and you know, we have to be excited about it. Then we put it out there and, you know, we cross our fingers, but we feel really good about what yeah, we've done. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're halfway through the next record already, mm -hmm. recording it. Are you really? We've started. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, tell me it's more. Tell us more. <laughs> um, Apparently well, we can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when was it? It was in September, right? September, yeah. So Kevin came out to, in, to Lunenburg um, in early September, and we just hammered away at a, for a week and got all kinds of really interesting ideas going on. And So yeah. we'll do that again in... Uh, in January. January, think, yeah. right, yeah. So I don't mind you mind if I put this up, but you, you live in Lunenburg. Yeah. And your bedroom window looks like one of the blue nose, they said. Is that true? That's very true. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you both so very Thanks much. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. To, Thanks, David. It's a pleasure. pleasure. It's, I'm yeah. just going to see who's right. beside you. Here, put that. All right. Uh, it's really a pleasure, and I, I, it's been wonderful. Yeah. Thanks. Is there anything else you really need to say, or have we said it all? We said too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>